So, you want to know a few tips to help you get started in Inkscape? Well, you've come to the right place. Hey guys, we're Metats by Kai. I'm Kai, and today we are back once again in Inkscape. It's been a little bit of time. Actually, it hasn't been that much time. Well, it's been a little bit since the tutorial, but the last video we posted was an Inkscape video. I've been really enjoying Inkscape, so I figure I would share a couple of the things that I have been doing and some of the tips that really help out uh, when you're starting or uh, just in general for that matter. So the first thing I usually do when I open up Inkscape is I go ahead and go up to um, File, Document Properties, and then we would go ahead and we just uncheck Show Page Border because you see this, this little page here, it's kind of annoying, so I just un check that because we don't need that because in, in Inkscape there is no canvas there's no canvas so you can make something anywhere um, and then it is actually part of the um, the page because it's not actually a page it's it's vector graphics so wherever you wherever you make something at you can just select that and then export this piece later on individually rather than having like a canvas that is such and such pixels by such and such pixels it will literally go forever as you can see up at the top here I'm on 5,000 pixels and I can just keep scrolling over and over and over forever and ever and ever and ever and it will never stop um, so what we can do here is uh, a couple of like I said really 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 useful uh, let's see if I can get back to where the beginning is oh god I've lost the center of the canvas ladies and gentlemen there we go alright um, so a, a couple of really cool things that you can do here is you can see right, right here on the right hand side we have a couple of tabs I'm gonna go ahead and actually uh, close these out so let's say you don't have anything open on the right hand side so um, let's actually go ahead and grab a circle this little circle tool and we're gonna just click and drag a, a circle open uh, now if you want to make this circle like an actual you know proper circle that is not deformed hold down um, control and then you can make a nice circle that is not you know messed up obviously it snaps to edges and corners now if you want this to expand from the center hold down shift so you hold down shift it will expand from the center and if you hold down shift and control it'll expand from the center and it will remain a proper circle as well so that's really cool um, there's a lot of stuff about Inkscape, and I'm not going to go through all of it today, obviously, because that would be insane. But I'll just go through some, some of the basics. So um, let's go ahead and uh, go back to the cursor right here. So now we can grab this and select it. Now you can see, if I were to click this, uh, you can see we can, we can scale this and whatnot. We can scale it in this direction. We can scale it in this direction, which is really cool. But if you want to rotate it, you can click again, and then you can actually grab one of these pivot points and rotate the circle. Obviously, it's a circle, so you're not seeing anything rotate. So let me make a, a cube real quick. Um, there we go. If you click it uh, again, you can see this little rotate thing comes up, and you can actually rotate this, which is very, very cool. Uh, but something else that's really cool is if you're on rotate mode like this, and you select one of the side pieces instead of one of the corner pieces, if you grab one of these side pieces, you can actually shear the object in a specific direction. So you can shear it super easy. All right. Let's say that you have a, a sketch that you're trying to make line art for, right? So let's say you have some kind of sketch. Now, what you're going to want to do is you want to go down to this tool right here, which is called the Draw Bezier Curves in Straight Lines tool, which is uh, by default the B key on your keyboard. Um, we can go ahead and create some lines. So I can click once, and then I can click again, right? But let's say I want to actually curve this line while I'm making them. I can just go ahead and click and hold down, and then just drag my cursor, and you can see it will curve that line there. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and just wrap this back around to the beginning piece and then hit uh, close it up and click the starting point to close it up like that. Now, let's say I don't want these these edges here to be sharp. I don't want this to be sharp. I want it to be all smooth like it's like a, some kind of teardrop look. So obviously this is hard right here and this is hard right here as well. So we're, we're going to fix that by going ahead and grabbing this little tool right here, which is the Edit Paths by Nodes tool. So I'm going to grab this. Um, and I'm going to select the line, and then we can move these points around, which is really cool. And I can actually grab these these little pivot points and then actually move them, which is just really, really cool. So I can do this and move them around. Now, if I want to move two points at the same time, you can see I can kind of get that to line up a little bit. And then I can hold down Shift, and you can see we can move both of these these points at the same time, which is very, very useful. So we want this to be colored in. So let's go ahead and grab this little orange color down here and click that. So we can just click that really quickly to, to make a color. But what you would probably want to do is you probably want to go up and find, where is it at up here? There is a, of course, uh, buh, 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 buh. I can never remember where it is, to be honest with you. It's up here somewhere. There's a there's a way to open up the fill and stroke right here in object. It's under object. So object fill and stroke you can see boom if you click that you can now open up the color panel which is very very cool I love Inkscape's color panel because they have multiple different uh, types right here readily available my favorite is HSL of course um, but we can go ahead and now customize this color so I can make it a little bit more yellowish a little brighter a little less saturated 
Um, but for today, I'm going to actually do something like this. So it's like, like a little bit like that. All right, now, so if we zoom in by holding down control and scrolling our mouse wheel, um, you can see there's a thin black line here. This is like the outline, I suppose. Now, if you don't want this, you can always go to Stroke Paint and then click this little X. And then it gets rid of that. But if you do want actually, if you actually do want line art around whatever object that you have selected, you can go ahead and make sure this little stroke flat color is on. And then you can go ahead and actually go to stroke style and then change the width. So we can make this like five. Or we can make it like 20, you know? And we can make it thicker and thicker and thicker, as thick as you want it to be. It can be as like thick, it can be so thick you don't even see anything else other than line anymore. Like it can be that thick, guys. Um, but you can see we can have some really, really, really solid, sharp, clean lines um, just from using this stroke tool, which is very, very cool um, and very useful. Now, you can change, of course, the type. You can change it to dashes. You can change it to whatever else. I don't really know why you want to do that. But listen, you can if you want to. Um, I'm changing it back to a solid line. Um, and then we can go ahead and actually change the cap points as well. So you can see on the ends, uh, we can determine what, what, kind of, uh, what kind of end piece we want. We can have a rounded corner. We can have a uh, sharp corner like that, which is like cut off like a plateau. Or we can have the actual, the proper corner, which is the sharp corner with the edge on it like that, so, which is very nice. So um, now we can go ahead and uh, go back to fill and maybe want to change the color of this. Uh, uh, sorry, go back to stroke paint, sorry, and change the color of this. Maybe you want this uh, color to be not black. Maybe you want it to reflect the color because you're doing some kind of specific style. A lot of cartoons nowadays have this kind of color edge instead of um, black edges. Uh, uh, Amazing World of Gumball does this, um, which looks really good, which looks really good. So I like this a lot as well. So we're going to go ahead and do something like that. Now, the cool thing about the stroke is, is that it's not actually a layer that's like, if you were to do this in any other program, you would have to change the stroke line as well. But if you want to change this, it will change the stroke line with it, which is just very, very cool and very useful and very time savey. Um, this looks pretty good so far. So what I want to do now is I think I want to go ahead and talk about really quickly um, layers and whatnot. There are layers in um, Inkscape, but I honestly tend to use them less often than you would think. Um, because it's not GIMP, you don't really need them, to be honest with you. You can just use the Align tool. But I will quickly go over layers, so let's go ahead and actually go ahead and go to Object, and then we can go ahead and put up uh, well, we can just let's put up a, a line and distribute first. So we'll go down here to a line and distribute, and we'll just pop that up there. So now we have this little this little tool. So now let's say that you have let's actually get rid of this real quick. Let's say you have two objects. Let's say you have a little rectangle like this, right? And you have a circle, right? So let's change these colors and change these things up a little bit. I'm going to turn stroke off of both of them. I'm going to make this one down here red like that. All right. So in this one, I'm going to make this one uh, a, a darker yellowish like that all right cool so you have these two you have these two objects now let's say you want this circle to be dead center of the um the 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 the, the rectangle you can see up here in the line of distribute we can have we have a lot of different options it looks kind of crazy but really to be honest with you, the only two you really ever gonna are ever gonna need is pretty much this one right here which is center on vertical axis right so it just centered them it just centered everything we selected to the center so it, it pushed the the circle over to the center of the the rectangle and then this one right here which is the same thing but horizontal so it centers everything in the horizontal and then of course the vertical so that is now directly centered in the exact middle of our little rectangle thing here so that is very very useful and then we can go ahead and click this again and shear that if we want to um, we can right click this and then go ahead and duplicate this um, which is now we have we have two of these which is cool Control Z, but now you can see the problem is, is that this is over top of our circle. We don't want it to be over top of the circle. So really quickly, I'm actually going to go ahead and change the color, just darken it like like that, I suppose, a little bit. What we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and click this lower uh, one step twice. So one, and now it's behind the circle, and then two. So now it's behind the um, the other rectangle. But what we need to do now is we need to go up to do, 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 uh, object and then flip horizontal now you can see we can actually flip that uh that piece we have selected the darker piece horizontally it is now looking you know proper it's it's behind everything it looks nice it looks good i don't know what we're making it's not exactly very good looking but listen um all right so we're gonna be out of here today i hope you enjoyed today's tutorial um i will see you in the next one but until then bye bye